वेलकम एवरी वन टू डे फोर्टीन वेल जस्ट लाइक दैट वी हैव रीच द एंड ऑफ टू वीक्स नाउ विच इज सिंपली अमेजिंग एंड वेल आई एम ऑल एक्साइटेड फॉर टूडेज क्लास एंड आई होप यू आर एज वेल टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू बिगिन विथ अ स्लाइटली डिफरेंट फॉर्मैट वी आर गोइंग टू गो टू द टैक्टिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दैम बट बिफोर दैट आई वॉन्ट यू टू try your hand at this very position uh, that is in front of you white to move over here and i will sh- give a shout out to everyone who's here uh, so agastya day shushil kumar chauhan kalidos pechi quest reshu jain anish adiga shushil kumar chauhan aditya anand स्वयं उबाले कुशल जानी एलन के थॉमस ओके आई शुड प्रोनाउंस द के प्रदीप दास तनुजा सर्वानंद एंड नंदन अमित जोशी प्रथमेश दिवेकर दंड पानी वैभव मजूमदार मुकुलन बाला John Wong, who's from Singapore. Welcome, John. Pankaj Panchal, Sumed Ramteke, uh, Reshma Dulgaj, Suryansh Verma, Suryansh Verma, who knows the game, it seems. Riddhiman, Nandish Kumar. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for being here again. By the way, I must give a shout out to Virendra, who's contributed twenty rupees, the first contributor to. for the show and i think for the first time we had someone contributing before the show began so thank you so much virendra for that so how many of you know this game i think it's a very very famous game uh, and i have a few answers which is sporty nagaram who's who said that <laughs> varun raste asked me if the if by chance lockdown extends are you going to continue with this sessions it's awesome learning from you well we'll see if we if we are unable to complete what we wanted to achieve then maybe yes welcome shri devi rongali uh kunal singh says i woke up at 4 to attend it kunal where are you right now in which country are you in Yes, Pankaj Panchal knows this game. Rima Singh got it right. Um, so we will come to this game in a bit, and I think there are a few people who already know this game. A few who will know it today, and I think all those who follow uh, Agad Matter, uh, he is a big fan of the player with the white pieces. Rashid Nazmuddinov and he has covered this game so it's highly possible that you guys know it okay so before we we come to the answer of this puzzle i will want to solve a few tactics with you a big thanks to ujjal datta who's contributed 20 rupees thank you so much ujjal okay so let's go to uh account.chessbase.com and to tactics trainer and yes let me just log in there we go home training and let's begin so let's do five today five positions and i hope you all would be ready so this one is white to play white to move what would you play here try to give me the entire variation rather than just the moves yeah just one move saurav says i'm late by 5 minutes i'm sorry well no problem very good answer by sairam sampath 
कालिदोस पेची गणेश चंचल झा ऋषिला बैनर्जी अथर्व पोलेकर मयूर हेगडे शंक्स किमया विरले विरिंची वडाली थरुण एम एक्सेलेंट आरका प्रथमेश दिवेकर रेशु जैन गौतम बाला नीव पटेल अगस्त्य डे इलम पार्थी एंड यू नो द थिंग विच यू ऑल हैव टू लर्न फ्रॉम इलम पार्थी आई थिंक इज हाउ टू गिव द फुल वेरिएशन ऑल्सो हाइडर यासमिन हैज डन दैट बट मेनी टाइम्स व्हाट हैपेंस इज यू गाइस ओनली टेल मी वन मो क्वीन बी टू नाउ imagine this is a class okay and you are preparing for an event now what i would ideally do is that how i want to play in the event is how i will prepare in the class so here in a game for example if you are playing in a tournament after queen b2 you won't shut down your brain yes so you will think about moves like b6 one possibility rook g7 other possibility so there are couple of possibilities and then you see okay if b6 maybe rook into b6 a into b6 queen into b6 looks interesting but if i play rook if he plays rook g7 i can take so queen b2 rook g7 i can take on e5 and that's how i want the answers to be i don't want one move but a little bit deeper than that okay queen b2 is the right move he plays rook g7 and you take king a8 doesn't that just win a piece okay second position for the day this one is very easy so and the nice thing for all of you is that here you don't have to write more than one move <laughs> Virendra asks I wanted to ask whether keeping in mind the tournament talent shall I keep him teaching the traps and gambits earlier you want to teach your son traps and gambits not a bad idea but always there should be a healthy balance of teaching him end games traps tactics everything but i would say tactics would be the most important right now if he is very young that's what i i feel okay namrata if you have any issues related to the tournament please write to team chess base india at gmail.com yeah that will solve your issue queen c8 is right as pointed out by siddhant sairam haider ilamparthi preet shanks rishila banerjee kimaya exactly this is a right move and quite a simple one and it's a checkmate Okay let's go to the next one this is the third one for the day again a pretty easy one black to move a big thanks to kunal singh ya yeah, kunal you should tell me where are you from which place uh, so thank you so much for your contribution of 20 rupees and uh, a big thanks to aditya kalepali who's contributed 10 dollars aditya thanks a lot for for your contribution okay this one is pretty easy sherwin yes you can spectate the 9th april tournament you can come inside the room uh, on chess base india vishy anand arena and you can watch it yes right answer by sairam haider devendra ashish and as ashish has given the right, complete variation good job also haider and sairam ilamparthi varun raste all those who are just saying rook into d2 it's an incomplete answer yeah i'm not going to read your name kimaya reshma and gautam bala you need to work on your notations this is rook d2 not rook e2 pradyuman soham आकाश प्रणव इशिर नारायणन कल्याण सुंदर श्रीयाना मल्या हु इज 10 इयर्स एंड 1 डे ओल्ड नाउ शी शी सेलिब्रेटेड हर बर्थडे विद अस यस्टरडे जैन डेरिल बटुला 
ईशिर नारायणन पंकज पंचाल गुड जॉब अरुण दीक्षित आई थिंक आई गॉट माय फिडे मास्टर टाइटल येस्टरडे सम हाउ आई डोंट नो मैजिकली सो परहैप्स यू हैव टू देयर कुड बी सम रूल टू गेट द नेक्स्ट टाइटल सो यू नीड टू कंटिन्यू वर्किंग ऑन योर टैक्टिक्स ओके लेट्स गो टू द फोर्थ पोजीशन ऑफ द डे ओके दिस वन इज वेरी इजी आई एम नॉट गोइंग आई एम आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू लेट यू आंसर दैट एंड गेट अ फ्री पॉइंट नाउ द फोर्थ वन ओके सो black to move hmm this is an interesting one hopefully tejaswati tejaswati singh says i am a newcomer welcome tejaswati yeah this is a tough one it seems like it this is 2653 but i don't see it to be so tough really maybe i'm missing something but perhaps it's a deep calculation what do you do here queen f2 says everyone okay <laughs> it's a nightmare uh queen f2 i think he will go king b3 that's what would be the best move there queen f2 king b3 ilam parthi has a very interesting answer i'm going to come to it later but my my uh question to all of you is is rook c4 such a stupid move you know like rook c4 rook into c4 queen into c4 now you are forced to exchange the queens so queen into b into king c3 b5 king b4 maybe king c7 king c5 and this looks bad yeah this position because he goes king d5 and takes on e5 and already uh, he would be piece up yeah so i mean pawn up and maybe it's not a good idea to play this move so yeah all those who found this move i i am really impressed if you found the move b4 really b4 amazing i can't believe it works no what's the first move b4 queen e3 king b7 is what many of you said but or first move king b7 ah first move king b7 yes because if i play b4 there is rook c8 check king b7 queen c6 and i am in trouble so first move king b7 yeah but b4 can you not give me a check on c8 is it not possible so let's begin with king b7 and then if rook c8 we have rook c4 maybe smart so your king is already up there yeah so king b7 amazing yeah rook c8 and now we can go rook c4 right or is there any other move i think rook c4 and now we won a crucial tempo ah not the strong move no how to continue here queen d7 maybe queen d7 but yeah maybe queen d7 traps the rook here instead of playing uh something else should be winning yeah queen b7 queen d7 rook f8 and now we can win the queen very good okay uh 
yeah everyone was saying first move b4 i thought rook c8 is very strong and now if i go here he can give a check and if i go to b7 this is already a mate i was thinking first move rook c4 but then take 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 king c3 b5 king b4 king b7 or king c7 king here and he actually wins this pawn but perhaps i can be a little smarter and go king here here and here so that if you go here i will go king b6 king e5 king c5 and maybe this is winning for black but there is no compulsion to actually take the queen i can also play b3 here when i think after take take maybe the position is around equal okay but the right way to play here would be uh, to play king b7 the rook has to stay on this file because otherwise rook c4 will be uh, a problem and if rook c8 now queen d7 and the rook has no square so very nice first move if i go queen d7 then there is no threat as such so i think just king b3 possibly ah king b3 rook d3 so maybe rook into b6 is a possibility rook into b6 check king a7 and then rook c6 back and then you have the c5 square so something like this 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 and the rook is not trapped okay so um, this was a nice one i think we go to the last one for the day and this is white to move seems easy i guess or not really not sure okay shubham soni if we buy chessbase account chessbase 15 then downloading the software in our computer then also we get premium account to use it yes you get three months of chessbase premium account along with chessbase 15 uh, i hope that solves your doubt see you want to push your pawn but king into e7 is coming up so what do you do yeah very good to mm. so first of all bishop e5 if king d5 then you see the bishop's root is blocked so you can play f7 with the idea of f8 if bishop e5 to king c5 then we can anyway play f7 and now the bishop on e5 is not hanging so after bishop into f7 rook into f7 you are a piece up well done i think the right answer has been given by uh, swanand datar arun dikshit anish adiga uh, rishila banerji reshma dulgaj viraj chess Aditya Ramanathan, good job guys. Also, uh, Nandan Sarvanan has got it, but I guess the notation is wrong uh, there, but otherwise you are right. Okay, so check King C5, F7 and you win. The point is Rook C8 is met with Rook E8. Okay, a few points to discuss with you before we begin the session. First of all, uh, I would like to tell you about our collection. We have raised now 54,000 rupees 
uh, with this sessions and Nikhilesh's sessions in the evening. So thank you all for your contribution. I would like to give a shout out to those who paid via pay you money yesterday because I couldn't do it in the class. Prakash Raj who's contributed 40 and Amit Mishra. In case I'm missing a name, then please let me know. Uh, regarding our online tournament, which will be held on 9th of April, we have Vidit taking part and also Shashi Kiran has just contributed. He's not playing. Nilot Paldas, Srinath, Magesh Chandran, Ankit Rajpara, Lakshman, Stani, Aditya Mittal, Setu Raman, uh, Aryan Chopra, Vishnu Prasanna and uh, I think I have to refresh this link. Perhaps there are more people there or yeah, Tanya Sachdev is there. She's playing Gukesh, Padmini Raut and the total uh, contribution I think has gone beyond uh, 70,000 rupees already for the tournament. So I think uh, this is going to be a big thing. We, we may cross a lot of sums. So around 1 lakh rupees from the event perhaps. And then uh, I hope we will be able to raise much more through these training classes. So we will contribute all of that to the PM Cares Fund. And it couldn't have been possible without all of you here who are there. So thank you so much. Now one more thing which I want to... Uh, let you guys know is if you go to Chessbase India channel on YouTube, Chessbase India, then the, the most recent video which you will see here, exactly here, is by Vidit Gujarati and this one was not shot yesterday. I didn't meet him. He is in Nashik but it was shot some while ago. And he shows how to analyze your own games. And everyone who has this question, how should I analyze my games? How, sh how should I do it? Please have a look at this video. It is really excellent. It already has 5,500 views since yesterday. So uh, please have a look and learn from with it. One hour of training where we analyze the game on this chess board first and then later on. We see it through a through an engine uh, on the normal chess base screen. Okay, a big thanks to Srishti Chede who says uh, thank you for your great support to everyone. Today is my mother's birthday. Okay, Srishti, wish your mother a very happy birthday. Um, really, thank you uh, for your contribution. Okay, so let's get back to the session now. And we come to this position. I hope you are warmed up enough. And uh, this is a very famous game between Nesmeddinov and Chernikov. And I want to tell you that when we are young, we are taught about material in chess. We are told a pawn is one point. A knight and a bishop are three points. Um, a rook is five points. A queen is nine points, okay? And so all of this, although we learn, gets fixed into our head. So whenever we are calculating, we are like, okay, I exchange this, I get three points, he takes my nine points. No, this is not good. Uh, what else should I do? I should move my queen away somewhere. So queen g3. But then he takes this. I lost 3 points, but I gained back 9, so I am now plus 6 points, but he gives me a check, I go back, then he takes here, so I lost 9 points, but I gained back, so you see this is how your mind conditions, first you are counting 3, 4, 5, all these points, later on it becomes natural for you and you no longer even think about these points, but they are there in your head, okay, uh, as you move on, the value of the pieces originally remains the same. You know, in essence, it's still queen is worth 9 points, bishop is worth 3 points, knight is worth 3 points, rook is 5 points. But slowly and steadily you understand that no, we have to look at minor pieces on the board. We have to look at the pawn structure. We have to look at the weak squares. And here, as all of you have rightly pointed out, 
queen into f6 was played by Nesmet Dino and the point is after say e into f6 bishop into d4 he has got only six points for the queen yes for nine points he gave he got only six points one bishop and one knight but he got a beautiful bishop on this diagonal this knight is all ready to jump into d5 where it will be a complete monster and this bishop on b3 is very active so in a way you can see that white has got much more than nine points in such a position he has very good compensation and this you can only learn when you get stronger so material in chess is a very very difficult concept it's very simple for a beginner this is a piece this is a uh, this is a rook this is a queen nine five three but when you become stronger the pieces value are no longer constant they are very fluid okay so in the game after queen f6 he gave a check just to distract the knight and then after takes he played knight c3 and you will see that uh, white is able to play really freely in this position while black is struggling rook e6 bishop d4 attacking f6 king g7 and now just bring your rook in d6 rook d3 the rook is ready to attack f6 pawn yeah bd7 rook f3 bishop b5 bishop c3 attacking the queen queen d8 knight into f6 so finally uh, you start to get the advantage of your better placed pieces bishop e2 was played well perhaps if rook into f6 i can play rook takes f6 here and then here i am a pawn up sorry yeah pawn up with a clearly better position uh, and if you are going to take this guy here i am sure there is a way to finish off this game can can anyone find out how should white win this position yeah if you like this t-shirt of checkmate this was gifted to me by my friends from indonesia this is a t-shirt that they have made the indonesian chess federation and it's a nice one i like it very much Yeah, knight h5 or knight g4. But how do you continue? Is it a mate after knight h5? Give me some lines, you know. Give me. Don't give me moves. Just one move. Bishop e6, as you say. But then he takes f6. How do you continue? nh5 double check but then he goes say king g8 back how do you continue that position <coughs> yeah nh7 is possible because then uh, you take here check and it's a mate but maybe he just doesn't take the knight he just plays king g8 what do you do then i was wondering if here we can go knight to g4 the point is that if he goes king f8 then i can take on e6 and this pawn is pinned and in any case if he goes to g8 i can go knight h6 check force the king to f8 and then take here also possible is to take directly here so that after this this is a nice checkmate you see the bishop here the knight controls these squares and the rook controls everything 
the king is checkmated okay so bishop e2 was played in the game he didn't take very good abdul kalam was the one who got this answer uh, knight into h7 king g8 rook h3 rook e5 f4 bishop f1 king f1 uh, well we don't go into too much of the details of this game but it was a fantastic game uh, by nesmedino and this final stroke was beautiful he lost a queen uh, and then white was material ahead and went on to win the game so this was a very nice game and i want to tell you that material in chess is a lot of it is dependent on other factors yeah not just material let me show you another game today on this theme um, and this is a very famous game selesniev versus alekhine and this is the position white's last move is bishop d3 what would you play here with black yeah allen uh, if knight d7 king g8 bishop into e6 fe6 rook f8 queen f8 knight f8 i think that's winning for black uh, Ishir Narayan, if f6, then bishop into e6 is a free uh, rook. Yeah, Shri Kumar Kesi has said something very nice about Kartikeyan Murli. Okay, we'll have a look at this game. Good suggestion, Shri Kumar. We, we will see that game. Black to move. Yeah, here. What should black play? Very good, Sanjay Kamble, Virinchi Vadali, Advait Vibhute, Kavita Naidu, Harsha Indukari, Leka Gusya, Kimaya Virle, well done, Ilamparthi. The point is here, the right move is Rook to B4, okay? And often you would say to yourself, hey, this Rook is worth 5 points. Bishop is only 3 points. How can I give that rook up? But then after he takes cb4, can anyone tell me with the imbalances that we have learned? What is it? What are the imbalances in this position? And what is it that black has gained here? So, do you think black is better in this position? If so, how? Let's, let's make an imbalance list here. It's an important point. Yeah, John Wong, you are right. Take with the C pawn. But now tell me what's happening in this position. Is white better? Black better? Why? Let's try to understand the imbalances here. Okay, bishop pair says Vashishta. Very good. This is bishop pair. Black has a passed pawn. Kimaya Virle. Very good. B4 is a passed pawn. Ishir Narayan says that bishop g7 is all I need to. Okay, very strong bishop. Yeah. Virendra, very good. c5 square is an outpost for the knight, and knights love outposts. Okay. And a4 is a weakness, as mentioned by Manthan Kale. Very good. Anything else? c5. So let's go. List wise, okay, how do you find the imbalances? I will show you the list so that you don't forget it. We have superior minor piece. So let's come back here and see. Here the superior minor piece are two bishops and also the knight on c5. It's going to be an amazing piece. No one can take it out from there easily. And so that gives black clear advantage of the minor pieces then let's go to the next one pawn structure and i think in the pawn structure again you will see that
okay i hope that this lag issue was just for now i hope it doesn't come back again uh, i am really scared of this lag and i i don't want to spoil your time and energy on that but well what can i do i have to come online and if you guys enjoy it you are also online so i hope that we are able to continue this uh, <clears throat> so it was good that the lag came in at a point where i was asking you to find the imbalances and the most important thing is that you have good minor pieces and outpost on c5 for your knight the b4 pawn is a passed pawn and now you will see that white has a lot of weaknesses in this position mainly the a4 and c4 pawns yeah those are very weak pawns now let's uh, go back to the next imbalance in the position which is space okay talking about space i feel that because of this passed pawn on b4 black has pretty good space but in general white can play e4 and start playing on the on the center so space although you can say is kind of equal in such a position it doesn't really affect the game so much because all the black pieces have nice squares for themselves okay yeah c4 is also a backward pawn as rightly pointed out by agastya day yeah all of you who are in love with the crow i think it it just flew away so flew away uh okay next one is material and here we have an important material imbalance white is up material he has two points extra because he has a rook for a bishop okay very nice uh, that white has this edge but in return black has the edge on other imbalances okay what else control of an open file or a weak square now here you will see that c5 is a weak square it is an outpost which black has also c file is a semi open file for black so he has some pressure on this weakness over here yeah so that is important to see white has a semi open file here but somehow this pawn is blunting his rook's action and the last point last two points are who has the initiative here the lead in development and initiative i would say that there is not not much to talk about lead in development both sides have pieces well developed initiative i think black has it right now white is unable to create threats okay so for now i would say black has the initiative because he is going to play knight c5 he is going to attack a4 and he is going to create a lot of problems and lastly a very important point king safety and i think for now both kings are okay but white king is definitely going to experience some issues on these light squares later on is quite possible okay now let's just see how the game continued by the way a big thanks to rahul anil bhagwat who's contributed 1000 rupees thank you so much rahul i would like to mention to all those who are here this this uh, money will go to pm cares fund all of it and also you have the link of pay you money in your description so you can pay from there as well okay so let's see how the game went knight d2 <clears throat> by the way all those who gave good answers for the imbalances i would like to thank you pankaj panchal karan parik aditya ramnathan shubham soni uh, and shri kumar many of you uh, has have given this answer so okay so knight d7 uh, knight d2 knight c5 knight b3 knight d7 was played because if knight into a4 then you have to be tactically alert rook a1 giving back a piece like rook bishop into a1 was possible but he didn't take here and possibly you know this position white gets counterplay so instead of that 
he didn't take it he went back and this shows that he wants to keep control you know no hurry c5 white got a little bit impatient uh, bishop into d3 ed3 dc5 uh, rook fe1 95 and we have an interesting position and later on black who was alekhine went on to win the game so that was a bit about material how different materials affect play now you know we have been learning about imbalances right from day one it would be nice to look at a game by the man who created this theory jeremy silman uh, and silman i'm going to take one of his games right now this was against ivanov and uh, silman was black and let's have a look at the moves uh, silman also likes to play the accelerated dragon just like me uh, and we reach this position it's white to move what would you play here well for now i think my internet connection is okay so should be fine c3 is what shank says well c3 possible but then you have to contend with knight c4 b into c3 with pressure down this diagonal rook looking here tinku saha says a3 but then Mm, bishop into b2 perhaps mukush mukesh cha has got the right answer good job mukesh uh who else who else is ready to give up some material manthan kale very good tejas jain yes mukesh cha as i have already mentioned jan deril butula Mohit Duseja as well. Good job, Mohit. Tinku Saha. Yes. So, for example, you see that firstly, b2 is hanging. The knight is coming to c4. So, there is a lot of pressure on the queen side. However, if you are able to kill everything with one move, but you have to give up some material, why not? And white played this really cool move b3 by the way if you play something like c3 then after knight c4 it's already very difficult to to defend this position b2 is hanging you can't play queen d3 you queen c2 b into c3 will come rook b2 is a threat so bad move yeah and knight d4 means again knight c4 threatening knight into b2 and d4 would be hanging so it's very difficult to control everything but with one move just by giving up your rook what do you get in return this is what i want to understand did white get enough so can you tell me what did white get in return for his material that is given by the way a big shout out to jaydeep chakrabarty i should i should calculate the total amount that jaydeep has contributed he ha i think he's he's contributed over Seven eight thousand rupees, it seems, in the last fourteen days. Uh, thank you so much, Jaydeep. And he says, "Thank you, Sagar. Do we have more such marathon session if lockdown gets increased till fifteenth May?" Whew. Well, uh, in general, I I really enjoy these sessions, uh, and I would like this interaction to continue. Maybe we won't do it every day, but we can do it on a weekly basis. Uh, the most important thing which I I learned from this is that so many out there are ready to work hard. You know, when I started this session, I felt like I'll do this. People will come, they will listen to me, and they will go away. But I get homeworks. In fact, today I woke up at 5 a.m. and many of you must have received some mails from me. 
uh, and i was working on the the games that you guys sent and it was on and on and so many people had sent it uh, although yesterday when i talked about sending your most uh, the game on in which you have cried or something like that not many sent it i think two or three people sent it and i'm going to show that game but well let's hope uh, that we can continue this but at least let's first get through the 21 days and see if the lockdown continues or not for now uh, it seems like the lockdown may even go further because we are not safe um yes very good everyone who said the long diagonal the dark squares are weak you have hit the not here here yeah these are the dark squares which are weak and the bishop can go here the queen can jump in this is the biggest thing but also you see the knight can jump from d4 to c6 sometimes uh, and e7 is slightly weak could be a potential worry and lastly white can play i don't know if anyone suggested this move uh, but a3 can be played at the right moment and then after b a rook a3 this knight is going to face trouble also the pawn on a7 will be weak so all of this all of this creates a lot of issues for black and therefore b3 is a really strong move guys try to understand that in chess you need to sacrifice material at the right moments okay uh silman the founder of the imbalance method said no i'm not going to take your take your bait on a1 and he played bishop a6 white to move now what would you do here by the way a big thanks to virinchi vadali uh, who's contributed 500 rupees virinchi says your sessions are hardcore that's the greatest part love your sessions thank you so much virinchi Subradeep Ghosh says, please read my comment. So what did you write, Subradeep? Please let me know. Arka says, my birthday is on 15th May. Okay, Arka, we'll try to get a session on 15th of May on your birthday. Yes, Tinku Saha, Ilam Parthi, Rishila Banerjee, Vaibhav Mazumdar, Pradeep Das, Mayur Hegde, well done guys, you got the right answer. Uh, Mukesh Jha has given a very interesting suggestion, I'll, I'll talk on that. Uh, Suryan Shwarma, correct. Shrishti Chede, good job. Saumya Mahesh, Preet Matre. Uh, it's true that you can just play Rook D1 here and maybe it seems fine, no problems. But why not let this rook be taken it's not a big deal so you play a3 here and you start to take advantage of this fact here so in the game bishop e2 was played queen e2 bishop a1 rook a1 b a3 rook a3 and although the game is not as effective like this position may not be as effective as this one because here after bishop a6 i could have preserved my knight with knight d4 and that's very good for the side with less material to keep more pieces on the board by the way a big shout out to shesha reddy who's contributed 100 rupees thank you so much shesha uh, a3 here after taking on e2 is a little bit less effective but still quite good because now black can even think of creating some play like this but still the dark squares are weak and in the game uh, after some moves uh, it it did end in a draw but i think white is the one who who is pushing here in this position okay so 
that was silman's game but although he was on the receiving end of these sacrifices uh, i would like to end this material section with one game which which has become like a classic and everyone should know about it i'm not going to tell you the names of the players you have to tell me this is black to move here in this position tell me who are the players here by the way can you hear a new bird not the crow yeah like always ah by the way um, who uh, knight d4 was also said in the last one where you sacrifice the other rook but i think bishop f1 rook f1 somehow not enough compensation but an interesting suggestion knight d4 yash bagel said i just joined the stream i know just the rules for moving chess pieces but i am quite zero in playing what shall i begin with well um, i think you can go through certain videos of niklesh jain on chess base india hindi and it will help you to get better sayan roy is very very uh, well versed with his with his classics good job sayan um by the way black to move yeah not white to move suryan sharma well done you have said it right uh pankaj panchal i did shout out the name of 1000 rupees contributor at the start um kushal jani knows his classics well done well done arun dikshit knows the move but not the player ec has got the move as well as the player plus his opponent right i think ec if you can even tell me the year in which the uh, the tournament was held that would be amazing uh reshma dulgaj right name suryan sharma has got the move right as well as the player yes hema it's the game of petrosian yes every uh i think ec until now has got the move the name of the black player and also the white player yeah both he has got right yeah white is reshevsky black is tigran petrosian and uh, it was played in the very famous candidates of 1953 and there is a book on this written by david bronstein who's written about the candidates 1953 a lot of people love this book so i would recommend it to you to go over that maybe you won't find hardcore engine analysis there but you will find a lot of interesting suggestions now uh, in this position black was kind of worried you know black was thinking to himself my opponent has the bishop pair he has the central pawns uh his pieces are well positioned of course bishop right now on b2 is not so great but it can come into the game via c1 and he wanted somehow to blockade on these squares you know if he can blockade on these squares imagine uh him making certain moves yeah like i'm not going to i'm just making some random moves imagine something like this happens okay first of all you can take the queen but if you reach such a position wow what a position for black he is completely better right but the bad news is the bishop is misplaced on g6 the knight is nowhere close to these two squares here on where it should be so petrosian said to himself i need to do something about this i need to blockade on the light squares and therefore here he played the move rook to e6 and this is really an amazing move uh, it has a lot to do with trying to control the squares to trying to keep this bishop passive and all of this and not worrying about material so yes if you take fe6 it does create give white a uh, material edge but next move black goes knight e7 knight d5 he has a monster on d5 
and this piece becomes bad. So, uh, in the game after rook e6, a4 was played, knight e7, bishop e6, f e6, queen f1, knight d5, and black managed to get back the material in the game. And then later on, although he's a pawn down, this knight is a complete monster. It was a drawn game later on, but everyone was in awe of Petrosian's exchange sacrifice. You know, everyone said this This is where the game ended. Everyone said, what a move, Rook e6. And this you have to remember. These are some games which are like a must-have in your arsenal. If you want to become a good player, you must study such games. And this was a famous game between Reshevsky and Petrosian from 1953. Keep the names in mind. Also the moves, they will be useful to you someday. Okay. Now, I had suggested you. So, let's go through the material. I will write down certain points here about material. It's a blank slate right now. But let me just write down a few things. Uh, <clears throat> what can I say about material? First of all, I think the side with the material advantage should try and exchange pieces okay second one material concept is not as static as what you learn in when you begin playing chess it is much more dynamic and depends upon many other factors like weaknesses, peace activity, and more. Yeah. And I'm going to make this smaller so it fits in the screen. Yeah. So please make a note of these things and remember that material can be a very, very powerful feature. Now, if you have an extra material in your game if you are a piece up or something it's good news you can just exchange pieces and try to win but if you play games and you know you are trying to blockade this or like alekhine you want a passed pawn you play rook b4 or like ivanov you play b3 and give up your rook on a1 all of this means you have very good understanding of material and are not fixated to five points, three points, one point. All of this doesn't matter after a point. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to now give you, uh, I'm now going to show you. Edwin Glass says, I think also it's very important to not play passively when a player is ahead on material. Stay active. Yes, you are right. I think I have an example on that. I'll show you. But first, a game by Prathamesh Divekar, who shared his game uh, where he lost. By the way, is Prathamesh here? I don't know if he's today attending the class, but he does. He's always there usually. So, okay. We, we come to this position here and in general, if you look at it, Prathamesh is white and his opponent is Kantilal Dave. Okay. And here, white is material up. If you count it, white is an exchange up. And so if you look at it closely, you will see that after uh, the game continued a4, queen b2, bishop a3, queen a3, queen c6, 
Prathamesh has mentioned the position is winning and I am thinking that my parents will be proud of me, my rating will increase and prices and everything of that sort, you know. This is what you must never think in your games. By the way, to all the people who say, have I seen your game or something? Yes, I have. I have your games. I'm going to see, but focus. Let's learn from others' mistakes. Okay. So here, what should white play? You know, it's clear that white has advantage of material. Also, the knight is very passive. But how do you take advantage of this fact? But you will see that the e4 pawn is also hanging. So take everything into consideration and try to find what is the best move for white. Yeah, very good. The right answer is suggested by Mukesh Ja, Shanks, Pradeep. Uh, no, not Pradeep. Mukesh Ja is the right one. Uh, Shashank, Chess Master, Kavita Naidu. Everyone has suggested the right move. But what happens if you play, let's say the move that you are all suggesting is Rook B1. But no one suggests what happens after queen into e4. What if he just picks up a pawn? What are you going to do then? Activity. This is very nice. Uh, Pradeep Das says rook b1 is the correct move because you get activity. You must play actively. That is true. But what is your plan if he takes this pawn? Yeah, Prathamesh is here. Prathamesh, I hope you will next time when you are winning this game, you don't worry about the prize money, the parents, what your parents have to say, but instead of focus on things like how to finish the game effectively, how to keep my pieces active. This is the most important move. Yeah, queen e4, but now uh, if you play say queen e7, then maybe it's possible uh, to, I guess the, I can just, let me see, what can I do? You have a threat of rook b8 here and you also would like to play rook b7, that is true. So what can black do? First of all, I'm wondering if, I can just improve my position with knight f8 because if you go rook b8 I already can give a check and take and you cannot win anymore you know check check is coming so therefore if you begin with rook b8 check here I go king here then what next say to Minocha do you suggest going through books in chess base well, if you have a book and you can type it through on chess base, it's a good idea. You have the notes for a long time then. Rook b1, queen e4, queen e7, rook c8, queen e6. Yeah, well, I am thinking after queen e4, queen e7 of making the move knight f8. Because if this rook leaves the back rank, then I can start checking. And if you can't, you alone can't do anything with your queen. So therefore, the right answer here and very strong move is actually to play queen d3. And you know this, the side with extra material should try and exchange pieces. And here it works out beautifully well because first of all, if you take my queen, then I take cd and this is already very bad position for black because the rook will come in here. The other rook can join through this file or the b file. 
you can also go to b4 and pick up this pawn so and this knight is really passive so that's why black is worse in this position okay so you can't exchange the pieces if you play queen d5 then after check king f7 white has a very powerful move here and i want you to calculate this white to move What should white play? Uh, rook b1, rook b4, that's what you said. Jaydeep, uh, what's your suggestion? Yeah, rook b1 and b4. Maybe rook b1, b4, but more importantly, you are trying to get into b8 and create mating threats. But queen d3, queen d5, uh, because here anyway, rook b4 is impossible. Yeah, like you will lose your rook with this way. So queen d3, queen d5 here and now you need to find a good move for white. Very good. All those who said g5, fantastic. g5 but the point is after take, take, knight g5, what's your plan? What should white play? What should white play in this position? Anyone who can come up with... Yeah, rook d8 says uh, Gautam. Interesting. Interesting. But I'll just move my queen. Say queen c5. I may not take your rook. After g5, hg, hg, knight g5, rook g5. Uh, sorry, knight g5. What will you play here? Queen a3 is possible, but then I guess uh, there will be there will be counterplay by uh, black here. Uh, I'm looking at knight f3 possibilities. First of all, knight f3 check or knight h3, then king h2, and there are no checks. But let's say knight f3. Uh, if king f1. Then knight d2 I was looking at so that then I can come queen. But yeah, king h1 looks pretty powerful here. So this doesn't seem to work. What else can I do? Well, I'm looking at perhaps queen c5 now to exchange the queens. And well, you gave up a couple of pawns. So now the queen exchange should be fine. Yes, Aditya Ramanathan has got it right. Well done. Also, Sanjay Kamble, Arun Dikshit. Very good. Uh, the right way to continue is to take on g5, fg and play queen h3. Good move. And here you are going to go queen h5 check and your rook with the queen create unstoppable threats. For example, if he takes on c2, you can give a check. King goes to e7 and I already see a mate in the air. Check. King here. Check. At least you can win the queen and later on win the game. So you can see that this game was played by Prathamesh whose rating is 1500. His opponent is 1900. Yet there is so much to learn. There is so much to learn about keeping your nerves in a better position. Going for activity always. Trying to exchange pieces when ahead in material and then calculating precisely when the moment comes. And this is how, my dear friends, you win the games. Yeah, you win games not by just sitting there and hoping that you will win, but by trying to find new ideas, resources, and when the right moment comes to calculate like a beast. Yeah, you calculate so well. That the opponent has no chance of survival. This is how you win games. Uh, so Prathamesh, keep in mind that next time when you get a winning position, be ruthless on your opponent. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, I have certain more games that I would like to share with you. Was it? Was there anyone? Ah, yeah, there was one more game which I got, which was this one. It was by Arka Datta uh, Choudhury, who is here as Gargi. And she played this game in CBSC Zonals. And she said this was a really memorable tournament for me. But I also learned a great lesson by losing the most memorable game of her life. This one. She's playing against Pathikrit. And Arka is black in this position. And we will go to the critical moment in the game here. Okay. So this is the position. Arka is black. And... Thanks, Sarka, for sharing this game because when, when you are winning and you lose the game, it's always very difficult to share such games. But you did so. Very nice of you. And in this position, uh, what should black play? It's black to move. Okay, a few things here. Rima Singh is all the time saying show the game of Jay Rainish and Carol Traxler. I don't know who, which game is that. But I'll have a look at it later. Shri Kumar says calculate like beast. Like Adiban. Yeah. That's what uh, even wild chess knockouts. Yes. Like Adiban. He calculates really well. I hope that I can get Adiban here on the show one day. Uh, he was mentioning that he would like to join in. And perhaps tomorrow or day after uh, would be nice. He wanted to raise funds for uh, people who are in trouble because of coronavirus. And uh, perhaps he may join in. Okay. Uh, Cyan Roy says, Keres once said to beat his opponent, he needed to beat them three times in the opening, middle game and end game. Yes, you are absolutely right. You cannot just say, I was better and then I won. You know, that's not how it works. Uh, Hema Logu, good, good move. You are right. Sanjay Kamble, excellent move. Krishna Kumar Bagel, right. Neev Patel, well done. Ak Akshay Matre as well. Everyone found the right move here. Shriyana Malya, which is Rook C8. And it fits into our system. When ahead of ahead in material, be active, you know, play actively here. And this is exactly the point. Rook c8. And then if you go back, you can play f5 as uh, Arka has mentioned in her notes. In the later on, she actually in the game, she played queen d1 check. And you can see how this game ended. King f2, f5, ef5. And here she blundered with king d7. And she said from this point onwards, things changed. F6, Queen G4, check. And you can see how both the rooks have become disconnected. D6, threatening a mate on C7, had to go back. And now Bishop H3, brilliant move. And she said, after the game, I sat on my board, covering my face for nearly half an hour. My three team members and coach consoled me sitting on the board i analyzed my game blindfolded uh, it was second round i won round one with ease after analyzing in the tournament hall i think is what made next three me win the next three rounds and draw in the last round very nice story uh, so it shows how she actually fought back and i think this is a good way to overcome your grief in fact I would like to show you this video if no one has seen it. Uh, it's on the Chess Base India YouTube channel. Um, let me just take you there. It is about the youngster Murzin Volodar. And it is about crying. And this is the video which we had shot in um, World Blitz. And you know Murzin is a big talent. He is just 12 years old. He's an IM. And after losing this game, you can see that he's almost about to cry. And he sits there with the hands on his head for nearly three to four minutes. Uh, and you can see this. He was very upset. 
and go to chess base india and see this video i'm not going to show you the entire video but he actually was not crying he was just trying to fight back he was saying to himself no i cannot lose in this way i must not lose my games like this i must come back and he was sitting there and he beat his gm opponent next round and this is what i i want you guys to also learn in chess that if you are feeling low after a result recover find your own recovery way for some it could be eating an ice cream for some it could be meeting a friend for some it could be just staying alone at the board putting your hands on your head you need to find your way of recovery but as we mentioned yesterday seventh point improve your recovery time if it took you half an hour to come out of losing next time try to make it 25 next time 20 and by the end you know when you become a very good player and grandmasters i hope you all will then at that point it should be down to one minute two minutes yes you feel bad after all you are chess players but the recovery should be quick okay so this is uh arka's game and by the way i just want to mention one more thing which all of you should avoid is that in her annotations she has mentioned here rook c8 till today i couldn't believe that i missed this move now i'll tell you the thing i used to write exactly in the same way but you know what you should do is you should try to think about why you missed this move okay rather than saying i cannot believe how i missed this move why was your mind distracted at that point were you thinking about something else were you looking at the games of other players on your team all of this should be factored in before you make a decision saying hey i don't believe that i could miss this move and if you don't believe it now you will miss the move again and again and it will happen more often than you can actually believe okay right so let's go to one more game i think we have several games from last couple of classes we haven't analyzed a few games uh, and i am going to show you a game by <clears throat> who is it just a second let me pull up the game I think it was by Shanks. Yes, Shanks. Uh, Shanks, what? I think you are here as well. And you are. What's your rating actually? Could you tell us? And what's your name? D4, E, D, C, D, and Bishop B4 was played. Well, the way to send me games is through chessbaseindia at gmail.com. Uh, did I miss someone's name who contributed some amount? Uh, I'm sorry if I did so. So I was too focused on, but I don't see any contributions. Yeah. Okay. So maybe not. Okay. BD2. And here after this, he played knight into e4. So the point is, this is not a good move by black. What should white play here? Sumed Ramteke says, an important lesson not to give up before losing and never celebrate before winning. Yes, very good. Danushka Yap said, how to improve in blitz, please tell. Well, always the way to improve is through practice. If you play more blitz, that would be good. But I also feel if you can play and understand where you are going wrong and try to improve on it, it will improve your progress. Yep, here this uh, was played. Shank's opponent played bishop takes b4 knight b4 and now came the powerful move bishop into f7 this would have been a strong move uh, it leads to interesting positions it's not winning or losing as such but 
in the game after take on f7 king f7 queen b3 check i think d5 and then you have an option whether to go knight e5 check first or you want to take on b4 first because if you take on b4 then i think black has the option of going rook e8 knight e5 and putting his king in or but if you give first check before taking then he has to block his rook and then you can take and so there are these little subtleties both have their pros and cons but i think the right way uh, in the game actually black played queen b3 which was a bad move because after d5 takes takes uh black is just better here yeah black is doing very well and shanks went on to win this game uh but my question to you is what is black's best move in this position what should black play i think this is a line which should be uh, known by all of you what is the best move for black it's a very well known line so it comes via the move order e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 c3 knight f6 and now everyone goes d3 in modern day chess they are not rushing but earlier everyone was saying if i get a tempo why shouldn't i get it why why shouldn't i take it but it's very concrete and it allows black to equalize and you should know what is the best way to equalize here it's the italian this opening is italian shank says i have played only one rated tournament 2 years ago and my rating came out 1380 my lead chess rating is currently 22 23 i think shank if you start playing more chess you will be uh, you will get higher rating uh, because you are much stronger than 1380 so yes very good uh, all those who said vijay ramadosh edwin glass prathamesh divekar uh, arun dikshit sagar chess all those who said bishop d2 bishop knight d2 and d5 good job this is how you equalize in this position and there is a very famous draw where after take stakes you give a you try to play this to create some pressure here now if black wants to play on he can play knight c7 then later on c6 castle and get a good position but he can also say knight a5 uh, queen a4 check knight c6 queen b3 and that would be like a grandmaster like draw yeah okay let's go to the next game my only reason for actually showing you these games is to inspire you to look at your own games and i believe that i have been successful because many of you have started looking within into your own games rather than games of say botwini carlson anand all of them yes you do that but you should know yourself better now we are going to take the game of neev patel who played against ashwin makwana i must tell about ashwin ashwin is a visually impaired chess player i have been uh, his trainer and this game actually took place just a month ago uh, it was gujarat state championship ashwin was white and neev was black ashwin is 1768 rated neev is 1400 rated and we come to an important position here okay it's time to think about the imbalances a bit okay please think i always want you guys to think that way to think about the imbalances in the position assess it and come to a solution i am waiting for everyone to say their imbalances make an assessment and come to a move here for black what should black play and uh, let's have a look yeah shashank says that would be a giri draw yes that that if you keep repeating okay shriram donated 101 rupees i'm sorry i if i missed it shriram thank you so much for donating 
ओके मुकेश जा सेज ब्लैक हैज अ बैकवर्ड पॉन ऑन डी सिक्स वेरी गुड मुकेश यू सॉ इट व्हाट एल्स व्हाट आर द इंबैलेंसेस एनीवन एल्स हु कैन टेल मी ब्लैक हैज अ बैकवर्ड पॉन प्रथमेश दिवेकर यस मुकेश जा एज वेल Uh, by the way, it's black to move, yeah, not white to move. Anushka Bhatt, yes, D six is the weakness. Anything else? Black has better king safety, says Jaydeep Chakrabarti. Possible. Uh, the king is right now safe. but you know white is just trying to checkmate black with h5 open the h file take on g7 queen h6 yeah like take this then take here and then jump in with the queen it will take some time so black has to be alert what else d5 is a square weakness says pradeep das yeah good point pradeep good point d6 is weak rishila good job who else suggests usually the square in front of the backward pawn is an outpost because the pawn is backward because there is no adjoining pawn so the square in front of it would be a weakness most of the times b6 is an outpost i think yes technically but b6 is so difficult to reach and also it's not so irrelevant you know it's outside so outposts although uh, although are the squares on which knights can sit uh, should be at least relevant in the position yeah not something on the side of the board jaydeep says white has d5 outpost if he can remove knight f6 yes very good point reshma dulgat says b2 is weak till this move yes possible can keep in mind that the queen can come and attack here black has the initiative says karan parik why do you say so karan black is underdeveloped says quest mm, i don't think so as such i mean next move i can just bring my bishop out haider yasmin says white has a weak king yes good point good point so based on all of this okay i am going to read out aditya ramnathan because i enjoy reading his imbalances he gives it properly black has a backward pawn white has a, so i'll make these colors black has a backward pawn white has the d5 square development relatively equal king safety is in white's favor okay interesting so if according to aditya this is a safer king than this black has the initiative material is equal overall evaluation equal plus hmm i don't first of all you said white king is safer but then you say black has the advantage not so sure aditya divya hl says bishop on f3 is passive very good point divya white intends to exchange dark squared bishops backward pawn on d6 semi open c file yes this has to be considered there is a possibility of opposite side castling h4 h5 and d5 square is weak okay fair enough so all the answers i got Advait Vibhute says the move now. Okay, what should Black play in this position after you've done this entire thing? Should Black play a move like Rook B8? Should Black play a move like Bishop E6? Should Black play B5? What are the moves? What is the possibility? Tanuja says Black should aim for F5. Well, Tanuja, here time is of the essence. If you waste time, let's say with a move like Knight E8, I'm going H5. You don't have time. Next time, I take here. my queen will jump in not that way that would be a bad jump here take on g6 and you have to be quick here
Hema logo, good move, good move by him. Shanks, the move what you suggest, also Vishal Kumar, what you suggest, was played in the game. But Virat Chess, good move. Here, uh, I don't know if Neve is still there in the in the comments, but Neve, he played the move B5 in the game, which was a fine move. Uh, and, well, it was a fighting move. But I think he had a much stronger move here. And that was, to all those who found this move, well done d5 and you are making use of the biggest imbalance in the position which is the king is in the center and when the king is in the center you open up the position immediately yeah and secondly concretely it works perfectly for example if ed5 e4 is trapping the bishop simple so basically in this position, for example, d5, even if you take knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, well, well, I hope uh, this was the final uh, disconnection, but also today has been a pretty decent day. It so happened only once and this was the second time. Uh, so my point is often, we get so much into the static factors of the position, bad bishop, backward pawn, all of this. And then we forget that actually there are also short term things like initiative. If you have the move and you can grab the initiative, then that's all that you need. D5 is a brilliant move. And to all those who actually found this move, well done. And... Uh, it shows that just finding the imbalances thoughtlessly will not help you improve. You have to be very, very, um, you have to find these imbalances with great care, not miss something. Like for example, here the initiative was the most important thing. Yeah, after d5, well, if you make a move like knight g3, suddenly all the attack and everything vanishes yeah like for example i can play even d4 or i can take on e4 knight e4 say take 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 and i don't oops not i'll take with the bishop i don't see how black has any issues here b7 i can play rook b8 and take on b2 uh, and in general, even I can go d4, which might be a nice move here. I feel like black is the one who's pushing in this position. Yeah, if uh, if I if you missed, if knight takes d5, then take on d5, queen d5. Oops, sorry. Queen d5, queen d5, e d5, and e4, trapping this bishop here. Yeah, also knight f e4 is possible, but you can also take this way. Okay. Now, finally, uh, I think it's time for the last game of the day because we have been at it. And I am going to take the game of Tiny B Boss, who sent his game. I don't know if Tiny B Boss, you are here. Yeah, b4, by the way. Here, uh, for example, take, queen takes, takes, say, bg7. Now I should consider if this, or yeah, first I take the king, and now b4. But after e into f3, the knight is attacked, so it's not working. Okay, let's see the next game. By the way, to all those who think I'm not reading their comments, please don't take it personally. I have nothing against any of you. Uh, I'm just missing out on certain comments because there are many. Okay. So here, let's look at this game by Tiny B Boss. He was playing with the white pieces in this game. I think it was an online game. And here he played the move E5. Is this a good move or a bad move? Can you tell me, is this a good move or a bad move? 
उदयकांत मित्र से डू यू स्पीक हिंदी ऑफ कोर्स मैं हिंदी बोल सकता हूं बहुत ही अच्छा बोल सकता हूं या आई विल शेयर टूडेज होमवर्क बिफोर आई लीव Sherwin, no, you don't need chess base account to spectate the tournament. You can just come and watch it. Good move says Agastya. Kavita Naidu says bad. All those who said bad, please tell why. Ilam Parthi, why is this a bad move? well krishna kumar bagel has contributed 19 rupees well very interesting amount thank you krishan kumar bagel for your contribution well it's clearly pralay sahu is the one who said exactly why this is a bad move because okay thematically this might be an okay position for for white i mean it's not a big but in this position after e5 uh, okay uh, arka has said thank you for your analysis this is to tell you that i am a boy okay will remember arka uh, you are a boy not a girl but gargi was somehow in my mind that uh, it's a feminine name <clears throat> yes you are right knight h5 is exactly the move now i'll give you a short example of how this works d4 d5 c4 and it comes in this very popular line of uh, queen's gambit as well sorry uh, rook e1 castles and let's say i make a move like bishop e3 knight c6 and now white plays the move d5 and you will see that if i take here take here take white is already slightly better but d5 turns out to be a mistake because of can anyone tell me why is d5 what should black play here and this is exactly the theme that comes in the main game of tiny b boss yes knight to a5 and you see that this bishop is attacked if it goes to bishop b3 then knight into b3 and take on d5 if it goes back you lose your d5 pawn so the very interesting move here can be a3 because then if knight c6 you can go d5 and now knight a5 means you can just bring your bishop back here where it cannot be taken by the knight so you see sometimes some moves have a very deep purpose a3 might seem like what is the point but you go a little deep and you find it so same way when we come to this game here after e5 if the pawn was on h3 perhaps this was a fine move but it was on f4 and so after knight h5 he just lost a pawn yeah but later on he went on to win the game so congratulations tiny b boss for that uh, superna banerji has contributed 101 says thank you sagar ji for making our lockdown mornings really interesting thank you so much for your contribution uh, superna as i must say is the mother of rishila wife of saurav so their entire family is a chess family it seems they all uh, see this together okay guys so thanks a lot for today tomorrow we will be meeting once again uh at 9 am and we will be looking at a few more things now we are making good progress in this direction where we have done one number one number two number three and number 4 today material and now we can talk about control of an open file and weak squares tomorrow 
and then move on to the lead in development and initiative and my final aim is to give you random positions like this one right now that we saw in so many games of your own where you need to start applying them like for example in news game that we just studied it there were so many imbalances so the real skill is identifying which imbalance is more important when we came here it was important to identify which was the main imbalance and then pinpoint on it and play the move d5 okay so a good doctor uh, if you go to him with say i have knee pain i have throat pain back pain and you show him he will pinpoint exactly that oh it's because of your back pain that your knee is paining and so all of that the same way you need to be a very very proficient chess player that you know okay in this position i do understand that this is a backward pawn i do understand that this is not a great bishop i do understand he's attacking but i realize initiative is the most important imbalance i have the move and i can create the threat so guys on that thought i will leave you here and uh, do contribute to this uh, initiative by the link the pay you money link in the description subscribe to the chess base india channel if you haven't done so already and lastly uh, you can go here to uh, chessbase.in our website and it's the fourth article here fifth one let's fight corona together and you join this tournament by contributing some amount to it and play against some of the best players in india so this is sagar shah signing off uh, and thanking all of you for a good time today sorry for the two disconnections but you see it was better than yesterday we improved from our losses yesterday was four disconnections today was two hopefully tomorrow there will be one or none and see you bye bye